So there's a good chance you've either seen or grown up with the cartoon Arthur. The critically acclaimed children's show has been going for 25 years and is the second longest running animated TV show in the US behind The Simpsons. The show also had dozens of celebrity cameos like Larry King, The Backstreet Boys and even Matt Damon. And like all things this successful, it wouldn't be complete without an absolutely horrendous licensed video game, so along came Arthur Ready to Race. Released in 2000 and made by RuneCraft Limited, Ready to Race is a game where seemingly everything went wrong, and yes, I'm aware this is a 20 year old game made for children, but that doesn't mean it has to be awful. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. So the premise to this game is Arthur and his friends are bored and want something to do. They find out about the Elwood City race day and then it's your job to collect the parts for the car. As game premises go, it's fine, I didn't expect anything in depth and it's nowhere near as bad as Pimp City. However, the opening cutscene is a different story. There's an old soapbox racer in my dad's barn. What are we waiting for? Let's go take a look. Wow! My favorite part is definitely the hard cut to them running down the hill and the fact that Buster appears to be flexing his way all the way down. In fact, all the cutscenes are dreadful in this game, but I should mention that terrible cutscenes are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's wrong with it. So firstly, I want to mention that all of the information on the cover falls into two categories. A, ambiguous to the point of false advertising, or B, actual false advertising. The amount of bullshit on that cover is phenomenal. Because despite this game being called Arthur Ready to Race, actually calling this a racing game is extremely questionable. Help Arthur build the ultimate race car, and Arthur wants to build the ultimate racer are both quotes you'll find on the box cover. And from those, you definitely assume this was something akin to Mario Kart, especially when the cover says race against a friend or the computer, and the loading screen has Arthur in a race car with smoking tyres. However, the game is actually nothing like that, or any other racer for that matter, because it's a soapbox racing game, and if you look that up, it's an entirely different type of racing to what the cover is clearly trying to represent. You won't find any information telling you this until the opening cutscene of the game, i.e. when you'd already paid for it and there's fuck all you can do about it. The actual racing is more akin to time trials, and this means the box cover claiming play alone or with friends is completely false. In the story, you can't even play against the computer, let alone actual people. Fun fact, even when you win, in the ending cutscene, Arthur is standing on his own, with second and third place empty. He apparently could have walked the fucking race without a car and still have won because no one else was in it. Ugh, right, anyway, here's how the actual racing works. It's just you, you get given an incredibly generous minute and a half to reach the finish line. When you do, you win. Do that twice and the game's over. The only time this is different is the practice run at the start, where no matter how slow you are, you always do well. Wow! Fun! What do you think? Impressive performance, Arthur! The thing is, the car handling isn't awful. It's not pimp my ride standards of bad because you can actually go in a straight line, but it's so dull that even children would get bored after one playthrough. You get three maps, no boosts, no level hazards, no competition, and uphill sections. Granted, there is a multiplayer mode, but it's the same as the story. Each player goes down the track one at a time, and the fastest wins. The best way to describe the racing in this game is like eating lukewarm watery porridge. It is food, but eating it is unfulfilling and awful. But then again, I guess Arthur ready to roll down a hill at five miles an hour wasn't a very catchy title. Ready? Steady? Go! Oh yeah! And try to pick up as many bionic bunny cards as you can! They're well worth collecting! This is great! I should also add that what I've described is actually a very small section of the game. Like 10% of this game is racing, and the other 90% is running around Elwood City collecting the parts for the car and loading screens. Just another reason why calling this a racing game is very questionable. See, before you can race, you have to build each car bar the first one. So you start with a shitty car, then make a slightly better version of that, 
then make the best one win and the game ends. I should also add the map can be fully explored in five minutes, so adventure style gameplay, my arse. The tasks to get the car parts consist of picking tomatoes for a set of wheels, rescuing Binky's backpack from a haunted graveyard for a car body, finding your sister in the library for another set of wheels, and chasing your dog for a steering wheel. None of these minigames are particularly good, they control fine, but much like the racing they're so bland. Binky's minigame is particularly bad, because not only is it boring as fuck, but it takes forever. And just like the racing, there's no actual threat to the player, you literally have to try and lose. Oh! Oh! Uh oh! Boops! 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 Uh oh! Uh oh! On top of this, the cover states play over and over again because the game changes each time you play, which just isn't true. And even if it was, you wouldn't want to. Firstly, you only build two cars. So over and over again is a bit of a stretch. And secondly, you play the exact same mini games again in the second half. Granted, there are some differences the second time around, but not to the actual gameplay. Because your dog has stolen a cake, not a turkey. Binky's lost his clarinet, not his backpack. And the other two are identical. Along with this, you have locations you can visit, such as the post office, the toy shop, the pet shop, the sugar bowl, and Jack's Jokes, a place where all the owner does is tell fucking horrendous knock-knock jokes every time you go in there. Knock-knock! Who's there? Xavier! Xavier who? Don't worry about me! Save yourself! He also tells one that's genuinely concerning. Knock-knock! Who's there? Halibut! Halibut who? Halibut a big wet kiss! Ladies and gentlemen, so we got him. Now my main issue with these places is the cover makes them seem far more important than they actually are. It says use critical thinking to solve puzzles at the sugar bowl and the pet shop. You can't do any of that. These locations have minimal things to do unless you class changing the music on the jukebox as critical thinking. The only thing in the game that comes remotely close to being a puzzle is when you find a missing parcel for the post office and it's right outside so you can't miss it. However, the stupidest location is the toy shop, which for whatever reason sells accessories for soapbox racers, accessories like bumpers, horns, new paint and car alarms. Car alarm. Why would you need a car alarm on a soapbox racer? How would that help win the race? And this means Elwood City is so riddled with crime that the local criminals are actually tempted to steal a car without an engine from an eight-year-old child. And it brings me to a big issue, because you spend the whole game collecting Arthur coin. Yes, Arthur coin. It sounds like a cryptocurrency, but it's apparently what Elwood City uses. And you use the Arthur coin to buy accessories from the toy shop, and that's their only use to buy completely useless cosmetic items. And it made me think, why not make it so you can buy the actual car parts you need from the toy shop, instead of useless cosmetic garbage? Because getting stuff from Binky, who conveniently came across two high-end car bodies in two days, makes no fucking sense. Why not save up with minigames, then buy them from the shop? And the consequences of not doing this means one, the toy shop is essentially useless, and two, you could go through the game without collecting a single coin, meaning they're totally meaningless and they don't need to be there. Oh and finally, on the topic of collectibles, I should also add, the cover says collect Bionic Bunny trading cards so you can trade them for new accessories. You can, you can collect Bionic Bunny cards, but they have literally no purpose at all. This game is just a disgusting, broken mess. Okay, so I imagine you didn't even think this section would be here, but it is. Firstly, this game is disgustingly short, meaning I had to do several painful playthroughs to get the game footage. So to make it more interesting, I decided to see how fast I could complete the game. And as it turns out, the game is pretty fun to speedrun probably because it's so short. And because of this, I became determined to be top three on speedrun.com, and now I am. Well, potentially. I actually have the second fastest time for completing this load of shit, it's just yet to be confirmed. So yeah, I enjoyed finishing this game as quickly as possible, but then again, that has nothing to do with the actual game, so it's a bit of a backhanded compliment. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so this game is horrendous, like truly horrendous. However, I think there's an obvious reason, because this game was made by RuneCraft Limited, but published by Mattel. And I got the constant feeling while playing this, that Mattel gave RuneCraft a tiny amount of time to make it, said here's the deadline, and whatever you have will be released regardless of what state it's in. It's the only logical explanation as to why it turned out like this, because I refuse to believe someone played it and said, you know what? I think that's ready to go. That would explain why almost nothing on the cover is actually in the game, but then again that's just my theory and it could be completely different. Also this game is rated as an edutainment game, but where the education is I don't have a fucking clue. That's the puzzle. The puzzle is finding the educational part of this game because god knows what any child was supposed to learn from it. The only thing I can think of is don't talk to creepy old men who threaten to kiss you. Overall ranking this, I'm putting it below Pimp My Ride, but above all the others, because while it is absolutely awful, I did have quite a lot of fun trying to speedrun this game, so I got some enjoyment, unlike Pimp My Ride, where I got none. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.